Hello everybody, my name is Hado. Welcome to this video on priority CPU scheduling algorithm. So this is an again an operating system CPU scheduling algorithm. Uh, we're going to be looking at the non preemptive version of this algorithm. So if you've been following the series non preemptive means uh, it should a process once start should not be interrupted. Okay, so if this is your first video in CPU scheduling algorithms as a whole, what we're trying to do is we have a set of processes here. We're going to schedule these process in our CPU. We're going to note down the Gantt chart. We're going to see how that particular thing works. So priority CPU scheduling is a very, very straightforward algorithm. Here, unlike other algorithms, we always prioritize the priority values, okay? Priority values. So what are these priorities values? Priori these priorities val values is something that's uh, new, okay? So these priority values are something that's new in priority CPU scheduling compared to other CPU scheduling algorithm. Here we have, we basically execute the process with the highest priority here we are by highest means like so one will be the process with the highest priority then we have two three four five okay that's how the priority order goes here we're going to be executing the process with the highest priority at any point of time non preemptive means there is going to be uh, no interruption so if we service a process that process will go until it ends but after that when we choose a new process we're going to be choosing the process with the highest priority. This is different from say as JF where we cho choose the shortest job. Then we again choose with burst time because that's that's what we compare there. Here we're introducing a new attribute or a new column that is the priority. Okay. So let's just move on with an example to see how this algorithm works since this is non preemptive very very straightforward. Okay. So at t is equal to 0. What are the processes that are available? We know the process p4 has ar arrived and p4's priority value is 2. Okay. But there is no other uh, process being arrived at this point. So which means 2 is uh, even though the priority is 2, P4 will be the one to be executed. Okay, so that is what we're doing here. P4 from 0 to until its burst time ends, which means from 0 to 3 because it's non preemptive, no other process should interrupt it. Okay, so now T is equal to 3. What are the process which arrive from T is equal to 0 from 3? Okay, so from 1 from 3. Okay, basically, so we have P3 at T is equal to 1. Okay, then we have at t is equal to 2 p1 and at t is equal to 3 no process arrives okay so which means we can go ahead and uh, calculate the priority values so p3's priority value here is 1 and p1's priority value here is 5 which means p3 has a higher priority value so p3 should be the process which will be executed next okay so p3 will be the one executed next and its burst time is 8 so until 11, P3 will be the one which is being executed. No other process will be executed. So again, when I say the highest priority, we mean priority 1 is greater than 2, greater than 3, greater than 4, greater than 5. So this depends on how you work. You can take 5 as the highest priority as well. But here for understanding, that's where we're taking. Okay. So now at T is equal to 11. We can see all the other processes which arrived, which means P1, P2 and P4. P4 is already done. So P5. These are the three processes. So let's note down their priority values. P1's priority value is 5, P2's priority value is 4 and P5's priority value is 3, okay. Which means P5 here is the process with the highest priority. So that will be executed next and that burst time is 4. So that will be until 15. Then we follow it by once this is gone, we have the next highest priority value is P2. So that will be done. P2's priority uh, burst time is 2. So that will be till 17. And if once that is done, we finally have P1. P1's burst time here is 6. So 17 plus 6, 23. So this will be the Gantt chart. Okay. So this is the Gantt chart and this is how the processes will be executed. Now we can go ahead and calculate the completion time, turnaround time and the waiting time for each process. We have say P1, P2, P2, P3, P4, P5. As always, we just pick one random process and calculates its uh, completion time, waiting time and turnaround time. You guys do for the rest. Okay. So let's just pick a random process, say P2 here. Okay. So P2's completion time is 17, okay. What is turnaround time? Turnaround time is completion time minus arrival time, okay. What is the arrival time? Arrival time is 5. So 17 minus 5 is 12, okay. Waiting time is turnaround time minus burst time, okay. So 12 minus burst time 2, which means 10 is the waiting time for process P2. So P2's priority is a very low number here, 4, which is why it's waiting for a long time. We say priority value... A P3, for example, having priority 1, that will have basically zero waiting time as it arrives. No, actually not zero because uh, this is a non-preemptive process. 
but basically it'll have the lower waiting time. So th th this is the algorithm by itself. You guys can go ahead and fill the rest. We can move on to the Python code now. So we've moved to uh, the Visual Studio code. So we're going to be looking at priority CPU scheduling and we're going to be looking at the non preemptive version. Okay, so non preemptive version. Okay, so first of all, let us go ahead and define a function as priority. This priority function will be taking a process list as its input. Okay. So this will do nothing for now. So first of all, let us say what a process list is. A process list basically here is a nested list and each element of the nested list is a list by itself and that will represent a process. So what is that list representing a process? Look, for the most easiest code, a process will be represented by a list which will contain its priority. Okay, it's uh, then you can say whatever you want. You can say it's burst time, arrival time and uh, the PID burst time, arrival time, okay, and or you can say PID. So basically what we're trying to do here, okay, mainly is priority should be the first element of that uh, particular process, okay. Every process priority will be the first value. Since, see here, two process will not have the same priority value, okay. So if we sort by the priority value, we can always say which process is the highest priority. So that will give us just one uh, single statement of code. So that is why we're doing this, okay. So that being said, let's just go if name equal to equal to main. Let us just define this process list so we know, you guys know what we're talking about here. Uh, see, let's take an example uh, for P1, okay. So for P1 here, we can say the uh, priority value is 5 followed by PID P1, burst time 6, arrival time 2, okay. So that will be uh, 5 followed by P1 and uh, followed by burst time 6, arrival time 2. So this is how I'm going to be filling out the rest of this table. Once I filled it out, I'll be back, okay. Right, so as you can see right now, I've gone ahead and filled this process list with whatever format we're seeing here, which is priority, PID, burst time, arrival time, okay. So that will be these input values. You guys can go ahead and check with this table if you want to. So now we can go ahead and move with our uh, algorithm. Okay. So first things first, we need to have some things to be declared. Okay. First of all, we need a Gantt chart to print, which is the order of the processes. Okay. And what is next? See, next we need time because that is how we're going to be keeping track of what time it is currently. And we have time values here as well. Okay. So then what do we need? See, one thing we need to do is have a dictionary completed uh, dictionary which will keep track of these values so what is the completion time turnaround time and waiting time okay what else do we need i think this is fine we can go ahead and move okay so look we are going to be once a process service we will move that out of the process list if you guys go ahead and uh, rewind you can see once we process this we are moving this from this list i'm removing it basically which means if the process list is empty that means our algorithm has been completed okay so we can loop this till the process is not empty the list is not empty so we can keep doing that okay so when the list is not empty when the process list is not empty this algorithm will keep uh, looping and we're finding out what the process with the highest priority is at that particular time instant and from there we are servicing it okay so first of all when we break this down into two we are going to find the processes which are available first then we'll find which has the highest priority so let us uh, declare an empty list called available okay so let us loop through this uh, process list itself and we can say see priority uh, arrival time is p of 3 okay so p of 3 is nothing but the arrival time okay uh, nothing but p of 3 okay so now we are seeing if this arrival time is lesser than the current time which means the process is available okay and see, you, uh, since it's available, see, we're removing the process once it gets serviced. So if it's available, that means the process has not been serviced yet. So we can definitely go ahead and put that in the available list. So if the arrival time is less than or equal to the current time, we can go ahead and append the process to available. Okay. So now if available is empty, which means there's no available process, so P CPU will be idle, okay? So we need to write a boundary condition. So if available is equal to equal to empty, that means the CPU is idle. So we'll go ahead and append idle to the Gantt chart and then we can increase the P value by one so it can move on to the next second, okay? So once that is done, we can now, okay, so this, uh, and then we can go ahead and put continue which means it will go on to the next iteration. 
So else, else is not required when there's a continue, but we'll do it anyways. Okay. So now there is something in the available list. What are we going to do? We are going to sort. By default, sort will always sort with the first, in case of nested list, it will always sort with the first element of the nested list. That is why I am saying do it with priority. Here it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, it will sort highest priority. It will be the first element of that available sorted list. In case you are doing 5, 5 has the highest priority, then you have to do reverse is equal to true here, except that everything is the same. Okay. So, now process to be uh, serviced will be available of what? zeroth element because we are sorting it okay so once this is done we can go ahead and pro uh, process this process which means number one remove the process see first of all let us go ahead and service the process okay so step one is remove the process which means we can go ahead and do process this dot remove of process that is done what else can we do next add to gun chart correct so we can go ahead and add uh, the PID is what PID is process of one. Okay. So from to the Gantt chart, we can go ahead and add the PID. Okay. That is also done. What do we do next? Update the time. Correct. So burst time is given by when you go here P of one two zero one two. Okay. That will be process of two, which means now we have that. So time plus equal to burst time. So that will be the updated time. See, if you are looking at here, before being processed from 0 to 3, that 3 is what we are updating here. Okay. So that is what is being updated with the burst time. Once that is done, what do we need? Create a, an entry in the completed dictionary. Correct. What is this dictionary? It is a table. See, since uh, this will be the key value, key and these will be the values. Okay, it will be a key and the list. So that is why it is a dictionary is better. Okay, so which means we have to calculate CT, TT, and WT. So CT is given by time. Since we are updating with the burst time, time will now be CT. Okay, TT is what? TT is okay. Arrival time is given by P of correct. So we can go ahead and create uh, arrival time is equal to process of 3 okay that also we have here 0 1 2 3 okay so tt is given by ct minus arrival time is that correct yes and then what do we have next we have waiting time waiting time is given by tt minus burst time okay now we have all these values we can go ahead and add completed dictionary of pid okay is equal to ct tt wt once this is completely done, see we have removed this process also, that means this algorithm is done. So because we are removing the process, it goes to the next next state. Once the process list is empty, this will come out. So once we are out of this list, that means our algorithm has completed. So we can go ahead and display the Gantt chart here and we can print the completed list, okay, uh, main dictionary. Okay. So let's just go ahead and call this priority function uh, with the process list as this input. So and then run this. See, let me just clear the terminal so you guys can see it a bit better. See, as we can see, we have P4, P3, P5, P2, P1. P4, P3, P5, P2, P1. So that is right. Then we can go ahead and this will be the completed uh, this table. Let's just go ahead and check. So for P2, CT will be 17, 12 and 10. For P2, 17, 12 and 10, which means this is right. If you guys go want to go ahead and... Uh, to print this in a way where it's beautiful you guys can go ahead and iterate through this dictionary and or this list and then print that okay so if you want to see the starting time and ending time that also you can go ahead create new lists and uh, add append just here whenever you're servicing that process and then print it out to the user but this by itself is the core this is how the algorithm works if this will be what is required mainly for you if they want to calculate the average waiting time you can just go ahead and add all these values and then divide by the number of processes that is it. This is the priority uh, CP scheduling algorithm, non preemptive version. Uh, very straightforward, very simple algorithm. This code will be available on the GitHub uh, link, link down in the description if you guys want it for reference. My suggestion, as always, is to just watch this video, understand the concept, try to code it on your own. Very straightforward, very simple. I hope this video helped you. If it did, hit the like button. If you guys want to watch more videos regarding OS operating system uh, concepts algorithms, uh, it will be down in the playlist uh, description. Uh, the link will be given to you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye.